We can rise to the occasion. We can build this nation moving forward. All that we need, visionary leadership, people who love their people, people who love the citizens, people who love the country, and then we can rise. We can fly again. Hope Restoration Ministries, restoring hope to our world. Welcome to our broadcast. Enjoy. So I'm speaking to you under this topic, God's provision for all. God's provision for all. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, your, your, your typical dictionary defines the word provision as the action of supply of supplying something for use. That is the word, you know, provision according to, to dictionary. It says it's the action of supplying something for use. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, the word provision is from the Latin compound word with two words joined together. So sometimes we read these words but we don't understand. But look at that word. It has the word pro, which means before, and the word vision, which simply means to see. So it is the word provision, okay? So the word provision simply means to see before. Are you with me? To see in front of, to perceive in advance, or to note beforehand and supply accordingly. So God will note beforehand and supply accordingly. You see, God does not just create things and thereafter... And, and try to figure it out. How am I going to supply this? Are you with me? When a child is born. God already has provided. Before that baby lands. When the baby lands. Day one on earth. The mother does not just go to the corner. And begin to pray and say. Where will I get milk for this baby? Automatically. God. Provides the milk for the baby. Day one, because God has already provided for whatever you need. But somewhere, somehow, because of the issues of life, we lose these principles. We lose the understanding of that, that God sees before. You know, and not only that, he knows beforehand and supply accordingly. Now, in theology, the Bible, the, the study of the Bible there is what we call God's providence. Actually, the other name for God, it is providence, the provider. So that statement or that word God's providence, it simply means it's God's constant provision for his people and his absolute rule over all creation for his own glory and the good of his people. Let me put it to you. It pleases God to provide for you. I always tell my children, it breaks my heart when you come to me and say, Papa, can I have a drink from the fridge? I say, come on. It pleases me to see you go into the fridge and open the fridge and take a drink. You don't have to beg for a drink that is in the fridge. You don't have to beg for the baloney that I have provided. As a matter of fact, when I see food, you know, being spoiled, you know, I get so head good in because I'm a good father. It pleases me to provide for my children. If it pleases me as a human being to provide for my children, how much more about the creator of the universe who created you in his own image? He says it pleases me as a father, as a God. And I am doing this for my own glory. Because if I don't provide for you, that is compromising my nature as a God. Because naturally, I'm a provider. So God's providence simply means that. And it also...
also means two things. So what does this mean, God's providence? It means two things to Christians. Number one, that the God of all creation sees you and sees ahead of you. If you can remember that, that this God sees, you know, or, or, or the God of all creation sees you and sees ahead of you. God does not merely see the future ahead. He, he decreases it and brings it to pass. And not only does he see ahead in a passive way, but he goes ahead in an active way and prepared things ahead of you. He did not just plant us in Africa and later on and say, what am I going to do with these African people? He planted us right here in Africa and put resources in Africa. But we, as, we are over 7 billion people in, 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 the, in, in the universe. It does not surprise God. God is not panicking. Good. What am I going to do with all these billions of people? Already there's a supply for it. When you read Matthew chapter 6 verse 30, it says, But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, all you of little faith? Jesus is addressing the disciples here. He says, if God can take care of the grass, he dresses the grass, the flowers. They look beautiful today. In the afternoon, they are dry and we take them and we put them in the oven or, 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 or we just destroy them. He says, if God can take care of that, how much more about you? In a nutshell, God says, I have made provision. Provision. So God's providence simply means that the God of all creation sees you and he sees ahead of you. And then number two, the God of all creation provides for what he has created. Remember when Daven goes, he provides for what he has created. If you have been created by God, he has provided for you. He has provided for you. I mean, he saw you, he saw you ahead of time. I mean, I'm struggling there and there. I'm going up and down, you know, and then many years ago, searching for food in the bin, and God says, Matebula, if you knew, I have provided for you. There were moments I was praying, Lord, when we start the ministry, where are we going to plant hope restoration ministries? God says, already I have put things in place. There's a piece of a land for you. There's a piece of a land. Lord, where are we going to get a building? And then in Midrand, God says, you are worrying. You are worrying too much. I've already, I've already put things in place for you. As a matter of fact, the Guptas are keeping your building for now. They are keeping the building for now. But uh, in due season, that building will be given to you. Did you know that we have a building that used to be owned by the Guptas in Midrand? It is a building that used to be owned by the Guptas in Midrand. And then the value of that building is 160 million rand. And God said, I will give you this building only in 28 million rand. And God provided that. You know, while you are worried, God says, I have already made provisions. Says there's a provision already that I have made. The God of all creation provides for what he has created. God cares for his people as he guides them in their journey of life. As you journey, he knows where he is leading you. And he knows how to provide for us as long as we trust him. He supplies the needs of his people to accomplish his purpose in them. You know, he's doing that because he has a purpose. That is why he has to supply. He has to provide these needs because he wants to accomplish his purpose. That is why in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 29, he says, what is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? Jesus is asking, he says, but not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. He says, even if the sparrow dies, inyo ni maifa, utu Jehovah, I know about that sparrow that has died. He says, if I know the sparrow that died this morning, he says, how much more about you? I know the things that are worrying you. I know that even this morning you are worried about your hairline. But I know that worry. You worry hairline. Did I prophesy this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. God has made provisions. 
It's just for us to discover where is that provision. Let me tell you, for, for every problem, there's a solution. For every problem, there's a solution. If we can just position ourselves and do exactly what God wants us to do, there will be no suffering. If in our land, it was an illogical shedding. There's a solution a long time ago. It's just people who are playing games with us. It's just people who are just playing games. They are up to something. If we have played our role nicely, and then there's no need for load shedding. God has provided already. It's to get the right government into power. And some of the problems will be out. We are born to See Peggy and I manage to speak with a new mayor. See Peggy and I manage to. You had 28 years to fix it to one's back. You have to put your foot. See Peggy, let us born. I I take against you, Shaban. I take against you, Shaban. We're talking about provisions for all. Now, here are a few things before I give you a few verses. I want you to grab these notes. Grab these things. Write down, please. When God calls you to do something, he provides everything it takes to get it done. Did you hear what I said, Bazaron? When God calls you to do something, he provides everything it takes to get it done. Never doubt that. Always remember that. If God has given you, I tell pastors, pastors, if God calls you, already has put things in place. Number two, when God calls you to an extraordinary task, for an extraordinary task, he provides extraordinary resources. He says, I have given you extraordinary tasks. But you need to understand, this is me, God. I have already given you extraordinary resources. He says, I am not that type of a God who will put a, 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 an engine of a Mazda 3 to 3 in, 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 in a truck. How can a truck pull the load with the, with the engine of Mazda 3 to 3? He says, I know the load that you are carrying. I know the vision that you have, Matebula. And for the vision that you have, it's an extraordinary vision. And I'm going to give you extraordinary resources so that you can accomplish what I have put in the inside of you. I don't know what's in Kulumano Banam Sanje. Maybe God has given you an extraordinary vision. Fear not, child of God. He says, as much as I give you this vision, I will give you extraordinary resources. That is how I operate as your God. That is how I operate as your God. Here you are. You've got capacity of handling this man. <laughs> but in Dover, I see you. Umbogo wa you. Umbogo wa you. Umbogo wa you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You cannot handle this man. You cannot handle. You cannot even handle this woman. Which mama is too much, man. It's too much. But you told Lobaba, Lobaba is so chill, man. He has a grace for this woman. You've got an extraordinary woman. Wagnigas are extraordinary resources. He's a good listener. Hey, some of us, I cannot handle you. So, Shalan into a Kungulung Lagnigas. Mikona was alone. Here is another one. Here is another Bambale, Bambale Matu, Bambale. Prosperity is a byproduct of an effective management of whatever God provides. Listen to me, Bazalwan. Provision is available for all. Here is the problem. We look at people who are prospering 
and we think they are, they are favored. Uh -uh, they are not favored. They were able to manage what God has provided. So prosperity is a byproduct of effective management of whatever God, you know, has provided. That is why these people, they prosper. All of us, we have an opportunity. We've got one rain. Even this season, the rain will come. There are those who are just going to watch the rain and say we had too much rain and they do nothing. They don't manage that rain. They don't harvest the water. I bought three tents now in my house because I want to harvest the water. I can't wait. There are those who just watch when it's raining. There are those who are going to manage the resources that God has given unto them. And we call that prosperity. Prosperity is the management of what God has given unto us. These people were, money, were able to manage what God has given unto us. And those who are not prospering, is either we have failed to see the opportunity or we have failed to manage what God has given unto us. But the truth is God has provided for all of us. And provision, it is still available for all of us. And the last one on that point, God provides the wind. Man must raise the sail. Did you hear what I said, Basil One? God provides the wind. Man must raise the sail. These are the wise words from Saint Augustine. God provides the wind. Man must raise the sail. Can I say to you, Basil One, God has provided, but we have failed to raise the sail. We cry out in Africa and say we are suffering this poverty. We have failed to raise the sail. Doesn't mean God has not provided. You look at that picture. You look at that picture. God will always provide the wind, but we must provide the sail. Look at the slide. You know, God will provide the seed to the sower. But it is it's the role of the sower to do what, Basalwane? To plant the seed. And God will give us the harvest. He will give us the harvest, the grain. But it is still the role, you know, of the sower to do what, Basalwane? To do the baking. The problem of God's people is that we want God to give us the seed. We also want God to come down and bake bread for us. And we say we are suffering, yet there's a seed. How do we suffer with so much land in Africa? How do we suffer with so much seed that God has given unto us? The role here is that God provides the wind, but we must raise, we must raise the sail, Bazalwana, so that we can experience the provision of God. And we know that baking bread, which is what people they don't want to do. We know that baking bread is going to make your hands to be dirty. You must mix the flour. You must mix things and then it becomes nasty. You sweat. You work. It is hard. And people, they don't want to do that. They just want the bread to be delivered, boom, in their house. Just yesterday, a plumber in this house, Ujef Timban. He's a plumber. He was showing me his new seven series that he bought. A plumber. Autumn Fundis, Nancy Plum. Nancy Mal. Here's the car that I bought. You're not going to sleep on me now, eh? If there's somebody sleeping. I'm not, I'm, before I call you by name, <laughs> I'm giving you things now. You see now. You need to raise the sail. You are sleeping. Yeah, man has a name. I don't know where were you yesterday. Why you did not sleep early? I don't know. I'm giving you stuff here. They are robbing you. The world has robbed you. Take your provision. I'm saying a plumber. Some of us who plumber who get a very kind of get already stuff, get already stuff. You know, he come on my dangers. He comes to me, he says, I'm full of Sabona, Maboko, I'm in the Komakama dangers, Kubon and Amutan begin. He Maboko, I come on my dangers. Because we, we, we don't want that. Umasaka drive his seven cities. Who, who, who knows who to drive a Bamba Matangas? Of the church, look 
at the churches where they prophesy and 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 speak of prosperity. In three months' time, God deep up, up, God deep up, up. I see, I see your fridge. Now I'm going, I'm going to your house. You know, I'm getting into the door. I, I see the fridge. I open the fridge now. It is empty, it's gonna be full. Oh, Papa, go deeper. Oh, Ella, forget about that. Forget about that. What I'm saying to you, you must use your hand. You must use your hand. God has provided the wind. You must raise the sail and that is how you're going to experience the provision of God. And the church of Jesus, they don't want that. They want the place where they're going to say, receive. <laughs> receive what are you receiving you can receive you can receive and the minister can lay hands on you until you lose all of your hair from your head but if you don't raise the sail you're gonna come into the same place over and over again without a breakthrough i'm sorry if they gave you a wrong gospel but in three months time your debt will disappear where for what do you think god is a robber he will he's a thief god is a thief you have taken that bond mind you find it disappearing because papa is praying i want to tell you your bond will never disappear it's going to remain in the name of jesus until you until you utilize your hands until you utilize your wisdom until you utilize what god has given unto you and then you're gonna see it disappearing because you are working hard god will provide the wind but you must raise the sail that it's how you tap into the anointing of god that it's how you come out of debts look at the person next to you and say hey lubaba spirit in god give you five different ways how God provides. Five different ways how God provides and I'll be out of your way. Five different ways. Are you ready? You see, number one, God provides through the hand of man. God provides through the hand of man. You see, Joseph had a revelation of this. He had a revelation of this that God has promoted me, God has blessed me so that I can provide, I can provide, so that he can provide through my hand. And Joseph had this revelation. Listen, listen what he says to his brothers when they were concerned about their future and there was a famine. In verse, four, in verse 7 of chapter 45, the Bible says, and God, and God sent me, this is Joseph, he says, and God sent me before you, you know, to preserve a posterity for you in the earth. Can you see now that word provision that God saw ahead? And then now he says, God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great salvation. Okay? So in verse 8 he says, so, so now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all, of all his house and a ruler through all the land of Egypt. So Joseph understands this. He says, it is God who saw ahead and he had to send me ahead for this day. For this day, and then in verse 8, he says, Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, That says your son Joseph. That says your son Joseph. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Geshen, and you shall be near to me. You and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your heads. And all that you have. There. He says there. I will provide for you. One translation. He says there I will provide for you with my own hands. Lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. For there are still five years of famine. But he says I understand that God has raised me for such a time. He says, God sent me ahead. He preserved me so that today he can use my hand. How I wish business people could understand this. How I wish you can understand that in that family, why it is you prospering, you know, and everybody has not prospered. You know, God has preserved your life. God has put you ahead. God had to hide you from all this mess so that today you can provide 
There is nothing wrong, Pastor Ron. God has blessed you for a reason. Look at this young man. It is not even a burden that is the only one blessed by God. He says, come, come. There's a famine in the land. Come, come. I want to provide. I want to provide for you. God uses your hand to provide. What a blessing, Pastor Ron. What a blessing during COVID. When everybody in my family were going through a challenge, I would put food in the bucket. Put food in my baggy. And all the families, Abashan, Abu Malume, you know, I was just delivering food, delivering food, food parcel for them. You know why? Because I understand that God has raised me as a Joseph in this season. When they are suffering, it must never be a burden. You must never feel bad if God has, has provided. Take my, my, my mother-in-law had a serious challenge. Almost six months she was in, in, in ICU. Things were not doing well. I said when she comes back from hospital, she's going to come and stay with us. And God has provided. And you know what? With, the, with my hand that God, God, I will provide for them. I will look after them. As much as God has a grace over my life let me do it god has raised you for such a time as this why are you prospering among many it is because once god wants to use your hand to bless other people to be a provision to other people don't just sit there and say it's mine you know the problem why we have the problem we have in this nation it is because there are people that god has blessed but they're just keeping it to themselves. You know why we have poverty in the world? It is because there are people who are keeping things for themselves. Did you know that England has the ability and the power to wipe away poverty three times in the world? With the gold that they have. With the gold that they've stolen from Africa. We are sitting in poverty, but don't you go lead? And they're still milking this country, this continent. And it is only few people. That is the problem. Are you with me? So the Bible says, God provides through the hand of man. But remember, the hand of man, it is seasonal. That is why you can't keep on depending on the hand of man. Because it is seasonal. But you need to receive provision through God's hand. That is number two. God provides through his hand. I call this God's supernatural hand. You remember he said to, to Elijah, Elijah, I have made provision for you. Go to the east. I have already commanded the ravens. The ravens, they are on their way. Supernatural hand of God. The ravens, they are on their way to the east. Your, your role and your purpose is to go to the east because the ravens, they are on their way with meat and bread. Praise the name of Jesus. Under the instructions of God, you go there and they're going to provide for you there. And the Bible says in the morning, the ravens provided. In the evening, the ravens provided meat and bread. You know, supernatural provisions of God. He can still do that today, Barcelona. And when you read in the book of First Kings, chapter nineteen, over three, he rose because Jezebel was after he, he, his life. He was running away from Jezebel. This is Elijah. He rose and ran for his life and went to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am not better than my father's. This guy was depressed. And while he was depressed, praying a prayer that he wants to die, waiting for God to kill him. Listen what God, God provided. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him. And said to him, arise and eat. Then he looked up. And there by his head was a cake baked on coils and a jar of water. He ate and drank. Praise the name of Jesus. He ate and drank. I'm talking about the God who can provide with his supernatural hand. Right in the desert, right in the dry land, 
Uta hofu ya vela basalwa. Hallelujah. Ufagi pini fla ke uti here is my servant. I'm going to provide for you. We see God baking a cake. We see God preparing a fire. That's what the Bible says. It was a, a, a bread baked, you know, by hot coils. Ungulungulu wa baker. Uta hofu with his own supernatural hand he begged for his servant can i declare bazalwane if men they don't look after you there is a god who can provide there is a god who can supply don't depend on man because there is still a supernatural hand of god that can provide <laughs> A boy from Sitama section. Here we are in this building. God provided. Uchehofa wa provide. And young Isabel Salwan. Sin a building a midland. Uchehofu provided. Sin a building. You know, a, a roddy board. God provided. We've got a building a springs. God provided. We've got a building a tempisa. God provided. We've got a, a building. You know, a, a, a pony. God has provided. Supernaturally, God provided. And he still does with his supernatural hand. He can still provide the number of the ghost. And the third way God provides it is through your own hand. Through your own hand, God can provide. God gives us ingredients for our daily bread, but expects us to do the baking. Did you hear what I said, Pastor? He gives us ingredients, our daily ingredients for bread, but he expects us to do the baking. Some of us, we say there's no provision. The problem is that we don't do the baking. He says, I want to provide for you, but can you avail your hands for the provision. Moses, Moses, what is it that is in your hand? He says it is just the stuff. God says, you are not just carrying a stuff. The thing that you are carrying with your own hand is a provision. One day you're going to face the Red Sea. You don't have to cry out before me. Just point at the Red Sea. Praise the name of Jesus. You point at the Red Sea and the Red Sea will part. You know, Moses, listen to me. If Pharaoh does not believe in what you are, you are doing, just throw the, the rod on the floor. Aaron, throw the rod on the floor. It will turn into the snake. And not just the snake, it can swallow other snake. Moses, Moses, what is it that is in your hand? He says it's a stuff. Listen, child of God, when you were born, when you were born, you were born with something. All of us, when we were born, we were born with a gift. The problem, all of us in Africa, we want to be prophets and pastors. Where are the engineers? Where are the builders? Where are the plumbers? We need to understand that God has given us these hands. God is not in the business, Bazarwan, of just performing miracles every day, thinking that we're going to wake up and waiting for a miracle. I'm waiting for a miracle. God provide a miracle. God is looking at you. Oh, oh, oh miracle, miracle, miracle. Go deeper, Papa, for what? God says, I'm not going to provide a miracle. I have given you hands. Do you want a miracle? Discover what I have given you. You are so powerful, when In you, there's a, there, 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 there's a graphic designer. In you, there's an interior designer. It is just time for you to unleash that. Just unleash that. In you, there's a great business person. God says, I cannot just keep on carrying them and provide for them. Listen what Deuteronomy says. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Now they're about to step into the promised land. God has been providing manna for them for all these years. But now they are stepping into the promised land. And God says, for the land which you, you go to possess, it's not like the land of Egypt from which you have come. He says, where you sowed your seed and watered it by food. He says, that was a flat land. Probably in Egypt you had ama, ama irrigators. He says, as vegetable gardens. That's what you had. But in verse 11 he says, but the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys. You know, God is fair to them. 
What is the land in your Tata Manji? It's not an easy land. What is this one? It is a land of hills and valleys. It's not a flat land. But he's preparing them. He says, in this land, there's a water that is flowing. There's rain from heaven. He says, there's rain from heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it. From the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. God says, I, I am putting you into that land. But in the nutshell, he says, it is your role to harvest this water. It is your role to, to learn how to plant on the hill. It is your role to learn how to, 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 to plant on the valley. But all that you need, I'm going to provide. And guess what? When they stepped into the promised land, manna ceased. Just when they stepped into the promised land, God says, no more manna. Why falungulunguli manna? They don't add benefit. Isn't those mahala? They don't add value. Tunkulunkul seize the mana. That is why in this country we'll never go anywhere until we have destroyed our men. The worst thing that we have ever done in this nation is to give our men 350. We have destroyed the manhood. What a disgrace. We have never even asked this man, would he just give us an hour? One hour a week and then we'll give you 350. But we just gave them. We just destroyed their manhood. If you want to destroy the man, give men things for free. And you will destroy a man. That man will never do anything. In total, we are doing it. We are enjoying. Because by nature we are hunters. Sex should be a reward. Ung niggas and jema halam bimbi. Angenzanga luto ni niggas and jepi. And you expect me to marry you? Ung niggas and jema halam jepi. We are full now. It's a poop. You have destroyed that man. Look at the animal kingdom. I told him, must work first. I'm talking about a chicken before it can get the provision. You must work and it must come as a reward. <laughs> it's a topic for another day. Let's leave this. Look at the man next to you and say, he's preaching God. He's preaching God. Hallelujah. Use your hands. Did you know that 60 million people, not 60 percent, when you count like, 350 now the 18,000, 18 million, it depends on who grant. Sixteen percent of South African South Africa, depending on the grant. And it's around about 7 million people supporting the whole South Africa with their tax. 7 million people, if I'm not mistaken, are carrying the whole nation in tax. Si tax wa, si tax wa bazalwane. I prakete ngu yang safu no kuluma. You deserve hell. You know, the, the, the hottest place in hell is waiting for you. Yeah. 
Uinch on to it. Uten in Mercedes, Malia Tex, who we drive a center to his seven cell. Because the simplest thing to do, the simplest, you know, to become successful in the simplest way in this world, you know, is to become a politician. And you know, you can get all the, the, the resources that people have worked for. Ah, no man, not too long, and I said, Footman Tengele and Belluna Lily Green and Yellow. Mangating your father, he looks like ANC. Hi, keep on, Mitang and Fun, Mitang and Fun Mangal Coral is same design, but little little black and, and yellow and green. Mangating your father, I look like ANC. Hi, Tangan and Bear when he love. You've messed us up. If you belong to the party, we are telling you. Look at our roads. Look at our infrastructure. Look at our schools. Look at our hospitals. Go and work. Did you also know as I close? God also provides through the hand of your enemy. That God can use the enemy. Uto Joseph, as for you, you meant it evil against me. But God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day, you know, so to save many lives. And when you read Romans chapter 8 verse 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. To those who are, who are, are, are called according to his purpose. As much as it might be painful, God is using them. He can provide through them. They fire you in your company, fire you out of your company, and then you start your own business, and then you look back, you say, I thank you for that evil man. I thank you for that man. Oh, today, I would be here. You know, there was a moment I was not treated well where I was coming from. There were a few people to my former church, they were making sure that they were stressing me. Imagine if they were taking care of me. Imagine if they were paying me well. Probably I will still sit in there. Month end, my envelope is 250, a married man, 250. In 1997, 250. Hey, I thank God for that season. I thank God for that season. Because if they paid me well, I don't think I'll be here. Listen to me, what am I trying to say? Sometimes God is using these people so that you can enter your true provision. So that they can push you into the true provision. It is okay. God is up to something. You may not understand, but God, he is up to something. Praise him before, you know, you even see what is happening. And finally, God provides through the hand of the church. God provides through the hand of the church. Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Because God wants to use the church as a provision to the world. You know, as the church, Mazalun, we are blessed that we can stand here and say, God, he's using us to be a provision. Today, we build houses for people. I think I've asked the team to put some few pictures. We give food. We are releasing another house this week as well. Next week, uh, this week, we are giving another family. We have gave people houses and we continue to build houses praise the name of Jesus isn't that amazing look at that but we continue to do that because God wants to use the church of Jesus to become the hand of his kingdom that is what God wants us to do praise the name of Jesus as a matter of fact as a matter of fact we have a backlog we have a backlog we're supposed to build another five houses before the end the, the, the year ends another five houses that we need building you know that we need to build if you know somebody who has a piece of a land and this family they are struggling they don't have a house we want to build five more houses before the, the year ends because we understand that God wants us to do that so if you know somebody contact our office we want to be a blessing to them so that we can bless them with five houses before the before Christmas because there's a church that understand that we have been called by God in this season to be a blessing